So this device is an air pump. This is actually an early 19th century version of an air pump, um, which was simply a machine using a gear and a handle and a pump to suck air extremely effectively out of a large space. Two things ma matter about this space. You can see what's going on through the glass, and you can get into it, which means you can turn vacuum into somewhere you can do an experiment. This, this kind of device was first built in the middle of the 17th century, mainly in order to find out whether or not empty space could be produced and what the role of air is in keeping animals and flame alive. Very quickly, in the second half of the 17th century, in England, France and the Low Countries, these kinds of machines became indispensable tools for analysing the way in which air moved and the behaviour of fire and steam. Because it soon became obvious that the processes which extinguish flame seem to be the same as the processes which extinguish life itself. Candles and mice go out at about the same rate and in roughly the same way. So machines like this were used, first of all, by Robert Boyle and then by his assistant, a French Protestant refugee called Denis Papin, to investigate the way in which air's pressure and air's weight really worked. Now, the kind of theor theoretical understanding that Boyle and Papin and their colleagues developed of how air weighs down on us and the role of air in keeping flame alive were indispensable resources for the new fire engines, as they were called, that Savory and Newcomen then began to design right at the end of the 17th century and in the early 1700s. So air pumps play an absolutely decisive role in the technology which leads to the construction of the first stationary steam engines.